and welcome students to a lecture on triacyl glycerols regarding their hydrolysis and how they are transported as fatty acids into mitochondria. First introduction. The lipids comprises a group of naturally occurring molecules which includes fats, waxes, sterols, fat soluble vitamins like vitamins A, D, E and K, monoglycerides, diglycerides, triglycerides, phospholipids and the likes. Although the term lipid is a synonym for fats, fats are a component of triglycerides, a subgroup of lipids. So triacylglycerides and triglycerols are one and the same thing. They are esters of three fatty acids and one glycerol moiety. They are derived from the diet and from liver metabolism. First classification of the triacylglycerols or the fats. The triacylglycerols or the fats are classified based on the carbon chain length, the number of double bonds, and finally the configuration of the double bonds. Chemically, triacylglycerols are esters derived from glycerol and three fatty acids. Glycerols are alcoholic group with three hydroxyl groups, while the fatty acids have carboxyl, that is, COOH group. The three fatty acids which are involved in triglycerols may be same or may be different. The chain length of fatty acids may vary from 16, 18 to 20 carbon atoms. And they have a polar as well as a non-polar end meaning that they are amphiphilic. Triglycerides are energy source of many organs in our body, particularly the liver, heart and the resting skeletal muscle. Although these triglycerides are stored energy sources, they cannot be absorbed as such by the duodenum. The duodenum can only absorb fatty acids, monoglycerides, which contain one fatty acid and one glycerol, and some diglycerides. Thus, the triglycerides are needed to be broken down to simpler absorbable forms by duodenum. This process of breakdown of triglycerides to simpler absorbable forms is what we call hydrolysis or the lipolysis. So this lecture focuses on lipolysis or hydrolysis of triglycerides which are stored in adipocytes as high energy sources to simpler and absorbable forms that is the free fatty acids and glycerol and how these are transported to the mitochondria for oxidation to generate energy. Thus, the two aspects of this lecture are as follows. Firstly, hydrolysis of the triglycerols to free fatty acids and glycerol. The transportation of fatty acids to mitochondria. The hydrolysis of triacylglycerols. So the triacylglycerols are sources of energy and are stored in adipocytes and even in steroid synthesizing cells of the adrenal cortex, ovary and testes in the form of lipid droplets. This undergo hydrolysis to yield free fatty acids and glycerol. So some terms to be familiarized before coming to hydrolysis are listed below. First, the perilipins. It is a lipid droplet associated protein which coats the lipid surface. Protecting the lipid from the body's natural lipages which breaks the lipids to free fatty acids and the glycerol is expressed in three different forms or isoforms as we know. Firstly, the perilipin A, perilipin B and perilipin C. So the perilipin A is the most abundant associated with lipid droplet. It is hyperphosphorylated by protein kinase A or the PKA during lipid hydrolysis. Next important thing is epinephrine. This epinephrine is a hormone produced by the adrenal glands and activates when the blood glucose level falls. It plays an important role in the flight or the fight response by increasing the blood flow to the muscles output of the herd, pupil dilation, and blood sugar. So epinephrine is one of the hormones involved in the hydrolysis of triacylglycerols into the glycerol 
and free fatty acids. Epinephrine triggers the 7TM or the 7 transmembrane receptors or the G-protein coupled receptors. These receptors will then activate the adenylate cyclase. Increase in this adenylate cyclase will result in the production of cyclic AMP from ATP. So next we have the second involvement, the adenylate cyclase or the AC. This enzyme catalyzes the conversion of ATP to 3'5' cyclic AMP and the pyrophosphate. This conversion requires magnesium ions. Adenylate cyclase they are often activated or they get inhibited by G proteins which are coupled to membrane receptors and can thus respond to hormonal or other stimuli such as pinephrine, glucagon and the likes. So the receptor mediated G proteins they are bound to the inner surface of cell membrane and they consist of G alpha and the tightly associated G beta gamma. There are many subclasses of G alpha subunits. The G alpha S, which is a stimulatory subunit, while the G alpha I is the inactivation unit. The G alpha S subunit activates the cyclic AMP production from ATP via the adenylyl cyclase enzyme. So the cyclic AMP in turn activates protein kinase A, which is followed. Protein kinase A or the PKA. It is a tetramer protein that consists of two regulatory and two catalytic subunits. The cyclic AMP which is produced from ATP will bind to the regulatory unit and this binding frees the catalytic unit earlier which was bound to the regulatory subunit. Now this PKA will phosphorylate the perilipin A protein coating the lipid droplets and thus frees the lipid droplets. Last, the lipase enzyme. Lipase enzyme belongs to esterases belonging to hydrolysis class of enzymes. They hydrolyze the triglycerides by acting on the glycerol backbone of the same. Now coming to the stepwise hydrolysis of the triglycerides. The hormone epinephrine which I have explained earlier and the glucagon. They are secreted in response to low blood glucose levels and they activate the enzyme adenylyl cyclase in the adipocyte plasma membrane via receptor mediated G proteins. So the G proteins activates adenylyl cyclase enzyme. This activated adenylyl cyclase will in turn produce intracellular second messenger cyclic AMP. Next, the cyclic AMP will phosphorylate and activate the protein kinase A or the PKA. The phosphorylated PKA in turn hyperphosphorylates perilipin A protein. Phosphorylating perilipin A inactivates it and removes it from adipocytes, thereby enabling the lipase enzymes to assess the triacylglycerols. Next, the lipase enzymes, which was present in the cytosol, will move towards the lipid droplets, which is now uncoated by perilipin A. It then hydrolyzes the triacylglycerols to free fatty acids and glycerol. Specific lipases they are available for specific glycerides, such as hormone-sensitive lipase, or as we know, HGL, monoglycerol lipase, MGL adipose triglyceride lipase or ATGL. So now the free fatty acids released passes from the adipocytes into the bloodstream. Upon reaching bloodstream, this now free fatty acids combines with the blood protein serum albumin. As many as 10 fatty acids bind with one serum albumin. Now, bound to the serum albumin protein, the previously insoluble fatty acid are now soluble and they are carried by bloodstream to tissues such as skeletal muscle, heart and the renal cortex. The fatty acids on reaching the target tissues dissociate from the serum albumin protein. Now they are to be oxidized further to yield energy and since 
the oxidative enzymes are present in mitochondrial matrix. They are moved by the plasma membrane transporters, which is the next topic of this lecture. Almost 95% of energy of the triglycerides are attributed by fatty acids, while only 5% comes from glycerol, which was the other product from hydrolysis of triglycerides. Next, this glycerol is phosphorylated by the enzyme glycerol kinase to give glycerol 3 phosphate. The glycerol 3 phosphate is oxidized to dihydroxyacetone phosphate, which is isomerized to glycerol dehyde 3 phosphate, which then enters glycolysis. The transport of fatty acids to mitochondria via the carnitine shuttle. Fatty acids enter after reaching targets. They are further to be oxidized to be used as energy sources. All the oxidative enzymes for animal cells, they are located in the mitochondrion and hence they are to be transported into mitochondrial matrix. Fatty acids with 12 or even fewer carbons, they can directly pass through the mitochondrial membrane pores without the need of transporters. However, those having more than 12 carbons, they will need transporters. Thus, the transport of such longer chain fatty acids to mitochondrion occurs via a series of enzymatic reactions and transports to different species via transporters. This whole process is called the carnitine shuttle. Conversion of fatty acid to fatty acyl-CoA via transesterification reaction. This first step involves a fatty acid which is derived from hydrolysis of triglyceride and acyl-CoA, ATP and finally fatty acyl-CoA synthesis enzyme which is specific for specific fatty acid. The reaction is a transesterification reaction. So requirements of this first step. Number one, acyl-CoA. The acyl-CoA has two parts. One part is the acyl part and the two part is a coenzyme A part. The acetyl or the acyl part is linked to the sulfhydryl substituent of the beta mercapto ethanol amine. While the CoA or the coenzyme A consists of a beta mercapto ethanol amine group linked to the vitamin pentothenic acid. Next requirement is an ATP molecule. The hydrolysis of one ATP is an exergonic reaction. This energy will in turn drive the ligation of the two molecules by the synthesis enzyme. Coming to the enzyme, acyl-CoA synthesis enzyme located in the outer mitochondrial membrane. It is a ligating enzyme which means that it joins two large molecules. It then catalyzes the joining of carboxyl group of the fatty acid to the thiol group of the coenzyme A to yield fatty acyl-CoA. So coming to the transesterification reaction. The transesterification involves bond formation by linking the OH from the carboxyl group of the fatty acid to the thiol group of coenzyme A by the ligating enzyme acyl-CoA synthesis to finally yield fatty acyl-CoA molecule. This new bond form is called a thioester linkage bond. The product of this transesterification we have fatty acyl-CoA ester. This is formed at the cytosolic site of the outer mitochondrial membrane. It can be used in the cytosol to synthesize the membrane lipids. However, the fatty acids which are destined for mitochondrial oxidation to further yield energy to tissues. They are transiently attached to the hydroxyl or the OH group of the carnitine molecule to form fatty acyl carnitine, which is the next step of the carnitine shuttle. So coming to the next step, entry of fatty acids via the carnitine transporter in the intermembrane space. Previously, we had the fatty acyl-CoA ester was formed at cytosol. 
now to be oxidized as energy fuel sources. The fatty acids are further destined to mitochondria to assess the oxidative enzymes which are present in the mitochondrial matrix. Now in the outer membrane, we have the enzyme carnitin acyl transferase 1. This enzyme transiently attaches the OH of the carnitin to fatty acyl CoA esters to finally form fatty acyl carnitin in the outer membrane. Now from the outer membrane, this fatty acyl carnitin will then enter the mitochondrial intermembrane space through large pores in the outer membrane. The third is the entry into the inner mitochondrial matrix. In the third and the final step of the carnitin shuttle, the fatty acyl group is enzymatically transferred from the carnitin to the intramitochondrial coenzyme A by another enzyme that is carnitin acyl transferase 2. This enzyme is located in the inner phase of the inner mitochondrial membrane while the previous carnitin acyl transferase 1 was located in the outer membrane. So the carnitin acyl transferase 2, it regenerates the fatty acyl CoA and free carnitin in the matrix. The fatty acyl CoA now can be acted upon by oxidative enzymes in the mitochondrial matrix. Now coming to the clinical importances of dietary fats. Fats in general, they play a role in maintaining healthy skin, hair, insulating the body organs against shock, maintaining body temperature and promoting healthy cell function. The fats also serve as useful buffer. Now low levels of essential fatty acids such as omega-3 fatty also known as alpha-linolenic acid and omega-6 fatty acids also known as alpha-linolenic acid or even imbalances in these two fatty acids might cause osteoporosis. This regulation in lipolysis or triglycerides contribute to obesity. The deficiency of lipase enzymes that causes lipolysis or hydrolysis of the triglycerides will cause Wallman's disease. This Wallman's disease is marked by accumulation of insoluble triacyl glycerols. This causes severe mental deterioration, low muscle tone, enlarged liver, and even might lead to liver cirrhosis. To conclude this lecture, triacylglycerols they are stored as rich energy reserves in adipocytes. They cannot be digested as such by duodenum. Thus, they are hydrolyzed to simpler absorbable forms, free fatty acids and glycerol by the actions of hormonal signals and lipase enzymes, etc. The free fatty acids will combine with the serum albumin in the bloodstream and are then transported to outer mitochondrial membrane whereby it undergoes the carnitin shuttle. Through a series of transports via the aid of transporters and transesterification reactions, these fatty acids are then generated in the mitochondrial matrix as fatty acyl-CoA. The free fatty acyl-CoA are now to be oxidized by the oxidative enzymes in the mitochondrial matrix.